I'm on an adventure to collect all 12 eyes hidden around the world before I lose all three of my lives. And you might say it's not going super well. Oh no! So far we've fought some pillagers, been scared off by some vex, and attempted arson even though mother nature said no. I'll be back for revenge, you mark my words. But the world gets more dangerous with each episode and now here there be dragons. Welcome back to the ultimate survival adventure. This is episode two. And we pick up right where we left off, me having just tried to burn down the mansion and returning home for a quick resupply run. All right, this rain might actually kind of work in our favor because we need books. I need a lot of books. Mansion has them. That might actually work out. Because if we can get enchanting and we can get some better armor, we can do some serious damage. So since brute force didn't work, I figured let's go in for a stealth approach. I really need the books if I'm gonna set up a proper enchanting setup and get myself level 30 enchants. I had the levels for it, just not the supplies. So I snuck my way up to the roof using the little waterfall I had prepared earlier, jumped down through a hole that I had created and started lopping off the top of the bookcases one at a time. Cover of darkness. I am Sam Fisher. They have no idea I'm here. Absolutely no clue. And I thought while I was here, I saw one Vindicator alone in a corner and I took a chance. Did I get them before they summon Vexes? Things are finally going my way. Yes! All right, I'll take that. And that's all I need from you right now, actually. With the totem and all the books I could ever need to get started with early enchanting, I returned back home and slept to reset the weather cycle and kick it off to the next day. As I was exploring around my house, I needed to get more wood to be able to make all of those bookcases. I did find a waterlogged cave. And since I had a snorkel and could just swim around in here, I figured let's go exploring a little bit. I am so glad I have this snorkel right now because if I didn't, this is basically a living nightmare of mine that I would never in a million years ever attempt. Even in Minecraft, this would be terrifying. But since I can breathe, I know I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, I feel so confident, can't you tell? Oh boy. I am lost. So I was a little lost in those tunnels for a bit, swimming around in circles, just coming back to the same point in the cave until I found the little two block gap that I had snuck through and finally made my way back up to the surface where I was about to start logging and was then encouraged, maybe not. Hello there. Maybe I shouldn't chop down trees here. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should leave. I should make like a tree and leave, leave, get it? So since that was a birch treant, I'm assuming they won't care about the oak trees just across the lake. Mechanically, I'm just hoping it's outside of the aggro range of that mob. I spent some time chopping down some trees, doing my best to not leave any floating out in the world, but these are a little bit more complicated. That actually led me back over towards that little hunter's cabin that I had seen earlier, where I did another look around to see if there's anything interesting. And while their house might've been empty, their backyard had exactly what I needed. Sheep, 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 hello. Hello. I need all the wool. I wish I had leads. I'd bring you home with me, but I don't. Oh, yes, hi. That's interesting. You. You, I recognize. This is a lot of very useful things. Be back for you in a bit. 
Actually, on the way home from that hermit statue, I found a second one, even closer to home, that I was able to grab the treasure from underneath and return back with a lot more magic dust in my pocket. And I swear that's not a euphemism. The following morning, I crafted up all of the bookcases and it's time to start expanding out the base a little bit. I excavated a section that I could use for a little switchback staircase leading up to a second tier and planted out all of the bookcases in place to be able to make a full level 30 enchanting setup. I also set up a barrel to hold all of the lapis, a grindstone in the ceiling. Then I realized I was missing something important. Now you see, this is where I would put my enchanting table if I had one. The trick is I could just go mining and get a diamond. That's all fun and games. That's not very ultimate of me. That's not very adventure of me. So we're gonna go explore and we're gonna earn that diamond. We also need a whole bunch of obsidian, both for that and for an eventual nether portal. But actually, I think there's a way where we can make exploring a whole lot easier. And it relies on this. Luckily we have more than enough wood just a matter of if we can afford it or we just spent all of it on enchanting tables. No, we need more logs. So once again, it's out for more wood to be able to go get that, but I did have some more crafting I needed to do. First up was copper for the boiler, other smelting. I needed more logs, but I needed to craft pistons. And for that, I needed redstone. And with me also needing diamond, I figured it was time to head back to a dungeon that I've explored a few times before just never in this playthrough. Let's head back to the crypts. Honestly, you're pretty cute. You just keep chilling right there, okay, buddy? Awesome. I hope that village survives, or else all of this effort is gonna be for basically nothing. So the crypts are a three-tiered descending structure that's just packed to the brim with zombies. Lots of zombie spawners around here. If I leave a few in place, I can actually probably set up a really good high yield XP farm, but the lowest levels, they're armed and armored a lot tougher. They're a lot harder to deal with. Thankfully, the way it's all set up, a few nicely placed blocks or some buckets of water can help secure it, but this is definitely confined quarters and their rules, not mine. All right, that was the easy part, believe it or not. And we get our very first great essence. You've seen how much fun I like with really cool cosmetic armors. You're going to have fun with this. Or I'm going to have fun with this. But in a second. Okay. Nothing right home about. We knew that. It's because the good stuff is further down. And it's not just the backpack mobs that can really kill me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm also concerned with just the overwhelming horde. You can hear zombies spawning quite a bit. And zombies actually have killed me in hardcore worlds before. So if I'm not careful and I let them grow too big in number, it's going to be a bit of a problem. This one will hit like a truck. <clears throat> the backpack makes it more dangerous and stronger. Ooh. Yes, okay. That is our first potentially set of really good armor, which is awesome. But I found out that this crypt intersects with the mine shaft because of course it does, but you'll never guess what I found inside. Oh my god! This is huge! That... That, ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, that is our very first eye. That is massive. Absolutely massive. That is...
That is... That's a rascal! Ow. Oh, ow. Zombie. There's the poison spiders. I don't have the food for that fight. Lapis? Wait. Okay, that's a regular golden apple. I got so excited for a second. is devastating. I had found my very first eye. I was in decent spot to get better enchants, better armor, better equipment, and I got killed by another skeleton with a backpack on that buffed them to all hell. That is my first life down, and I have zero eyes at this point. I need to go back and recover that if I have any semblance of completing this challenge. So I took the night to get some rest, and in the morning, we were back at it. Okay, game. This isn't necessary right here. This is unfair. That's just, that's just mean. We need to move very quickly to recover our stuff, because losing all of that, especially an eye, would be devastating. We can do this. We can do this. Unfortunately, I was carrying a lot of the diamonds that I have to my name and the ones that I had just recently found in that crypt, which meant the best I could do was iron armor and some basic iron tools. I'm gonna have to get in, get my stuff and get out because I cannot take on a fight in that state. And I'm gonna take advantage of anything I can do to ensure that I have a shot at getting my items back. This will make it so we can get to the items faster so they don't despawn. Because if we don't do that, by the time we get there, they might already be gone. I'm gonna go over land because I'm pretty sure I left my boat over at the crypt, which is not fun. I never get to see that way waypoint because I always play hardcore. This is new and exciting for me. Latest death. Things you never see in a Lagundo video. Ah, I'm right in your face. I grabbed some wheat along the way because I had actually forgotten to bring food, which seems like it would probably be important. And once we were finally close enough, it was time to go for it. I'm going to delete this. Because I do think getting exactly to the same location is a little cheesy, so we're going to delete that. Let's put our chunks back up so that not everything is spawning super close to us. I'm going to use every trick that I have to survive this. I could also just go in on the bottom level, but I don't know where it is. Okay. Let's try going down here, because if I remember right, it was right.
Oh my god, that's all my stuff. Uh, put that on. Where's the backpack? Where's the backpack? Where's the backpack? Oh, oh. wait, wait, wait. Seal myself in. Seal myself in. Okay. Oh my God. I can't believe I got it all. <laughs> that was so potentially almost really bad. Okay, let's recover. Now my inventory's a mess. Let's offhand a totem for right now, <laughs> just in case. There's the eye, which is massive. Okay, oh my god, it feels so good to have this stuff back. That would have been devastating to lose, I'm not gonna lie. Recovering my gear was a huge weight off my back. I was so worried that this series was basically dead on episode two, right? That would have been absolutely heartbreaking. But with that all taken care of, I started very slowly making my way towards the skeleton level of the crypt that intersected with this part of the mine shaft. There's a few spawners back there. That's the reason for the constant flow of mobs. So I'm taking out each wave, building out the box a little bit further, getting closer. And I thought at first, let's break the spawner. But instead, I decided to leave it for right now, at least contained in this location. If I can make a better way down here, this is a really reliable source for bone meal, arrows, and experience. All things that I would need in my later challenges still to come. So once I had collected everything and I got myself up a couple levels, just trying to recoup since I was over 30 at the time, I decided it was time to go, seeing one last treasure chest on my way out. Oh, hello. There's my diamonds and my redstone. Allows where to double jump? Stand by. So I made my way up into the crypts again, back onto the main floor of that space, but it was in a section that I had never accessed before. And a smart person would have just left and mined up to the surface through some cave that wasn't filled with mob spawners. But I am not a smart person. We play for content. Oh, this is useful. This is a useful room. Potato recovery three. I, I, I love that this is just a thing. Inventory is just a mess. We're just going to have to deal with that for right now. Brewing stand acquired. All right, let's get out of here. Whoa. The backpack mob is still there. Oh, 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 goblin, goblin friend. Yes, but also I got the backpack. That's huge. I can have a loot backpack now. Yes, okay. Hi, what are you trading? Unbreaking book. Efficiency. Do I have an unbreaking book? Fire protection, no. Thank you, my goblin friend. I don't really have anything to trade with you but I appreciate you. I'm leaving now. It's not very good. <laughs> Double jump is not very good. <laughs> Oh my God, that was so tense. Took a full day too. Okay, let's just get home, get our stuff organized and figure out everything that we just accomplished. 
with an arrow stuck in our head. The very first eye was now in my inventory and I was one twelfth of the way towards my final goal for this series. And I had collected all of the diamonds and redstone necessary that I could start building myself a few different variants of airships, which would make traversal over this world way easier. All right. I have a lot of inventory management to do, so we're going to do a quick little cut and then it'll be done. Ready? Whoa. Look at that. Organized. Well, uh, almost organized. We're not going to talk about this stuff. It's just gone now. But now I have a backpack, which I can use for loot, which... I might as well call. Stuff. And we're absolutely staying inside. <laughs> no. Just no. So I still need obsidian, but I have what I need for this. I can go ahead and get myself the next stage of the engine, I think. We make ourselves a couple pistons. That's our engine. We need a couple more hulls, which means a lot more logs, which we're just not going to get right now, but two more. And then we can craft that up. We can get those in the morning. But we also have our very first eye. This is huge. We'll put the eyes right here for right now until we can get a better place to store them. But we're going to need at least 12 of them. Well, all 12 of them. This is our first step towards being able to actually beat the game. And now that we're down one life, it's going to be a little bit harder. Can I use this yet? I can. Wait, that's awesome. Can I use the hearts? No, I need to, I need to complete the dungeons for those. But I'll take the experience. That's awesome. I use the spells, Dungeon Seeker, so I can't even use the magic yet, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm going to need to find a desert. That's going to take some time. That's probably all of episode three. Let's see what's out and about right now. The ducks are nervous. There's just a bunch of zombies in the distance. Yeah, everything is super red if you're not in the shaders. It's gonna mess with me though, I'm not gonna lie. Oh! Wait, was that creeper wearing a backpack? Did I just, did I just get another backpack? I did! <laughs> this one's actually really cool looking. Creeper colors is, is a vibe. I'll save this in case I need friends. Never know when we might have somebody visit us here in the ultimate survival adventure. Might have some guests at some point in time. Home sweet home. But now that I was organized, I was alive, I had survived another blood moon, it's time to really go out into the wild blue yonder and see what this world had to offer. And the way I was going to do that was flying, because you can build some machines to let you fly around in this world. It's almost time for us to take flight, and the Mudbusters are right here ready to take the sticks. So everyone knows that the Elytra is the fastest way to travel in the game, but Elytras are endgame loot. We don't have time for that. So the question is, which of these vehicles are better to use? Fortunately for us, speed is easy to test. So we're here out in the Alameda County flat world to put these methods of travel head to head with Crash to Splatipus here, going from point A to point B to see which flight plan is best to use. And the results seem to be pretty explanatory. The control test on the ground is doing their best, but nothing can compete with the raw power of the Wright Brothers biplane. Well, with one exception. The Elytra with rockets is easily the fastest method we have, but right now, that's more to provide a comparison point to vanilla. It's not like Legs has one accessible right now. You don't need no Elytra. Endgame is not the only way you can take to the sky. It's only about four blocks. 
Where'd my axe go? I spent some time chopping down a whole bunch of logs because I needed that for a couple different crafting recipes. Firstly, for a campfire, and then secondly, for some hulls. You know, for a plane. Craft up a campfire so we can start setting up a cook pot as well. We can also make our two other hulls. And we can make our biplane. Yes! We can fly. I'm just holding a plane in my hands. <laughs> We're gonna need a whole lot of coal for fuel. So let's just kind of put that in my pocket for right now. But now that aviation had been conquered, let's also set up a kitchen. Order of operations here might be a little bit weird, but getting more intense versions of food that will give me saturation, additional effects, better health regeneration, maybe even extra health, that could all be super useful. So getting into farmer's delight and cooking will come in handy. Plus I can always smack people with a frying pan if I want to down the line. But this plane requires a decent bit of space to take off. So I went out to the gravel shores directly off to the front left of my base and started setting down some torches to make a kind of rudimentary runway. Once that was all cleared, I plopped down the plane, filled it, and took off for the very first time. Did this fish just make me crash? That was almost so bad. Should probably also dig up everything over here to make this perfectly flat. Five minutes later. The runway must be clear of all fish. All right, tower to flight, flight to tower. We're ready to go again. Come on. <laughs> I think I need to figure out what the controls are. Oh, it's inverted. Oh, I hate that. Let's invert that back and try again. Oh. We have flight. We have altitude. I think the airship is better, but this is fun. This is gonna make finding a desert so much easier in the future. Oh no, there's dinosaurs on the runway. Flight to tower, there's dinosaurs on the runway. We're gonna have a hard time coming in for a landing at this point. Please advise, over. Okay. Let's just put this thing down in the ocean. one way to land a plane. <laughs> so let's just say my first day of flying didn't go super well. I mean, it's not like the Wright brothers got it right the first go either. Now we might not always have the right spot for that. So I think it's probably smart to build the second kind of airship as well, which is the actual airship airship. But I know I'm gonna need a couple different options. And while my second is far slower, it's a lot better when you're out on the move. So that one mainly requires wool. I spent a lot of the wool making different carpets and strings that I could use to make sails. I had to make another round of furnace, engine, and sets of hulls to be able to craft my way up towards an airship. That did require doing a little bit more tree chopping the following day, but thankfully I have more than enough of that around my home and I'm able to take to the skies again. Now this is a bit more my speed. 
Oh, you can only put one upgrade of any type. It's already a little bit faster. We can fly! Let's go off in this direction. We haven't explored over here yet. Nope! That seagull's chase. Get out of here, you little demon! It's gonna steal my bread. As soon as I- if I crash, it's gonna steal my bread- Ah, it stole my bread! Demon! That demon bird aside, being able to fly is making my traversal of this world far easier. And me finding POIs that I can actually interact with and get loot from, way more common. First was a tower where I was able to get a waystone and some emeralds and gold, then continuing to sail inland, far away from where I had been boating just a day prior in this world, I can now venture into the continent to see what else is there. I came across what looks kind of like a wizard tower of some kind, nestled in on a nice little hillock filled with trees on all sides. Going to explore it from the roof, you kind of short circuit the whole looting logic or methodology of this kind of structure design. I was able to work my way down, finding out that it's populated with skeletons who are easy enough to kill and getting a little bit of food and treasure from all of the boxes. But the lodestone was probably the thing I was most excited for. What a lost opportunity. That could have been so cool. By the way, this looks awesome. I might steal that room design for later. Yeah, I love the way that mods build rooms, okay? And I'm probably gonna try to rebuild those in my base, maybe in the hardcore world at some point. Tune into the streams. But I jumped back into the airship and continued sailing off towards the northeast, which is a landlocked area that I had not seen any structures, villages, anything else. And then I figured out why. What is, oh no. Oh, we gotta go. We gotta go right now. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. It's chasing us. We gotta run. Will I escape the dragon and survive? Will I find more than a single eye? Come back in a couple of weeks for episode three. We'll